Okay, this is number two of the second part of a question from someone that wanted me to demonstrate what happens in a series in a parallel circuit. I demonstrated what happened in a series circuit in a previous video. So now we are going to create a parallel circuit. Now, why do we call a parallel circuit a parallel circuit? Okay, we've got a five volt power source here. We have a resistor, R1, we'll call this 10, we'll say this has 10 ohms, and then we have 1, 2, 3 resistors here, and let's say for our purposes, we'll keep the numbers we the same like we did in a um, in series circuit. We have, and these are all in ohms, a 5, a 10 ohm, and a 15 ohm resistor. Now, if these branches weren't here, it would just be series. There would only be one path for electricity, but since we have three different paths to branch off, um, this is a parallel. We have three parallel uh, legs or uh, circuits. So it's kind of like circuits breaking off inside of a circuit. So the question we want to find is uh, what is the current? We want to know the to total current. That's one. Number two, we want to identify the voltage drop across all resistors. So I'll just put V drop. And then third, uh, we want to know the current across the resistors. I across. And I will just make a resistor symbol and apostrophe S. So we want to find total current, voltage drop, and current across the resistors. Now this is a little weird, so bear with me. We have to treat this system like it is a series circuit. So what we have to do is we have to combine these three branches. And how we do that is we use a formula. Uh, it gets a little funky, but just bear with me. I'll show you how to total. But resistance we know our voltage, uh, we are going to calculate our resistance. So we look at this as one part of a series circuit and then we look at this as a second part. But when we have three resistors like this, there's a formula we have to use. So R total and a parallel, I'll just put para for short, All right, is 1 over 1 over 5 plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 15. Now that looks kind of ugly and a lot of people aren't really really good with fractions and that's okay. When I have fractions in a fraction, what I do is I just turn these into decimals. How can I do that? I'm not going to actually do the division, you can do it on your own, but I would say 5 divided by 10 plus, I'm sorry, 1 divided by 5 1 divided by 10 plus 1 divided by 15 and you can put that in your calculator. The numbers that you're basically going to come up with is 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and then you're going to come up with 0 0.66666, but zero, you're going to come up with 0 0.06666, but we'll just round that up to 7. 0 0.07, sorry. So, these are the numbers, the decimals that we come up with. We add these three, 
if you get 0 0.07 plus 0.2 plus 0.1, we'll put zeros in there as fillers, you're going to actually get 3 point, 0.37, sorry. So now, 0.37 goes into the bottom replacing these fractions because we've done the math. I told you a fraction is just like a division problem. I did the division here for each fraction and, I, and then I added them because these are all to be added. So now we have 0.37 on the bottom and in order to find uh, total resistance at this point all we need to do is like I said, a fraction is a division problem. Go in your calculator, put in 0.37, divide 1 by 0.37, and the number you should come up with, and where is my handy dandy calculator? Just give me a second here. I am calculating. Not calculating, but I'm calculating. 1 divided by 0.37. Seven comes up with a number two point seven zero two seven zero two seven. It just repeats. So, what we will call our total is two point seven. There's zero behind it, so we don't need to round up. So, at this point, the resistance of this whole thing is two point seven ohms. So basically all we're doing is we're making or redrawing a circuit so to speak in which is just like a series circuit. We just broke it down. We have 10 ohms there. We have 2.7 ohms here. So just like we did in the other video, we add the circuit. We add the resistance, sorry. So it is 10 ohms, that is a 7, plus 2.7 ohms, which equals 12.7 ohms. And you can put 12.7 ohms, or you can put 12.7 and put the omega symbol. Either one works. Okay. So after we do that, it gives us current, which is the answer to our first question. What is the total current? We go back to our pyramid, which states V equals I over R. Draw our pyramid. So we want to find current. We divide voltage by resistance. Total resistance is 12.7. So, we take our calculators and um, basically 5 volts divided by 12.7 ohms is going to equal, let's get our calculator, 5 volts divided by 12.7 is equal to point 3937 so we'll say 0.394 I was equal to 0.397 uh, point 0.3937 I'm sorry 0.3937 so we have our 3 we have our 9 we have our 3 since 7 is above 5 we'll just say 0.394 for our current and it's 0.394 amps. All right. So, let's look at our voltage drop across the resistor. We want to find voltage, we have to multiply current and R1, so R1 equals current 0.394 amps times 10 ohms. 
I'm going to show you a little uh, math trick, but I want you to plug it in your calculator first. 0.394 times 10. Whenever we add a zero, a decimal moves to the right. So we add one, we multiply by 10, a number one, and then there's one zero. That just means it moves over once. And then we have 3.94 volts. So that is the voltage drop here. We go from five volts flow across this resistor to 3.94 volts. Now, we have to treat this parallel circuit in its entirety. We can't treat it like a single track of a circuit. So we have 0.39 volts here. And then a way you could always think about it is your redraw. When we did our redraw, we had 5 volts. We have 10, a 10 ohm resistor and then we have a 2.7 ohm resistor. You can go back in the video if you need to. So we leave, go through the first resistor, go through the second, because this is the total, 2.7 is the total resistance. So we treat it like it's kind of for our purposes of calculating a voltage drop and uh, current. We gotta find what the current is, all right? Just like we treat it like it's a single component. 0.394 volts resu resulted in a voltage of uh, amps times ohms. What did we say? We said 3.94 volts. So we got to treat that current as still going through. And what we do is we multiply 0.394 amps let's label times 2.7 and then we get a current that's flowing through all three of these resistors uh, all right so current is equal to total current going through the branches are is not R is see, 0.394 times 2.7 ohms And so what we get is a voltage of 1.06. That's our total voltage, 1.06. So now all we need to do is go back to our Ohm's law. If we want to find the current flowing through these three resistors, for our one, it is voltage 1.06 divided by 5 ohms will give us our current for 2 is 1.0, sorry, R sub 2, let's put our equal sign, divided by 10 ohms, and R3 is 1.06 volts divided by 15 ohms, and Might as well do the math. Like my uncle would say, do the math. 1.06 divided by 5 equals 0 0.212. 0 0.212 amps of current. 106 divided by 10. 1.06 divided by 10 ohms we just slide this 10 we're dividing we slide it that way if we were multiplying it go the other way so it's uh, 0 0.106 amps and then in 3 1.06 divided by 15 ohms is 0 0.71 amps and I'm sorry, 0 0.071. And let me just make that a little bit bigger. 
this uh, one has 0 0.071 amps. That's the 15. This guy has 0 0.106, and this guy has 0 0.212. Now notice something. The bigger the resistor, the more resistance it, it produces to slow down the current. All right, so we dropped from 3.394 amps and it split. This 0.394 is divided across the three parallel. So the more resistors we have, um, the lower, or I guess the higher the current would be, I'm sorry, it will produce less resistance. But let's look at the currents. All three of these currents should equal to 0.394. Let's take a look. And I'm just waving my hand to see how much real estate I have on the screen. 0 0.212, 0 0.106, 0 0.071 amps. 8, 9, 8, Three eight nine. I'm sorry. Point three eight nine, and it's very close. It's very close. If I rounded this down, it would be point three nine. I would have to round this up, and it would be point three nine. So they're basically equal to each other. So what happens is the current stays. put here at 0.394 amps and then as it goes across and again think of it as water we turn the faucet on we don't turn it up or down we don't increase any pressure the water's moving but as it goes over in the three different pipes at the same time or simultaneously the water pressure drops the current so think of current like kind of like water pressure so Linaria, I hope that helps. Thanks. Um, and anybody else having problems with any type of math, calculus, or physics problems, uh, just give me a shout. Send me um, a photo of the question in, the, uh, in my message. You could DM me or you could post it on my page, and I'll solve it. Thank you. Bye-bye. And, oh. So let's, I just want to make sure we answer all our questions. Total current, 0.394, voltage drop, 394. I could have computed voltage, but we got, we got the brand new voltages. Uh, we got the brand new voltage, which was here. So the voltage drops across each one of these resistors and the current across the resistors we calculated all that. Okay, just making sure I answered the questions. Thank you. Good night.